Hi, this is JJ with Express Workshops. This week we're going to do something that I do a lot of. We're going to take one person out of one photograph and insert them into another. Okay, let's get started. Um, this is a composite that I did uh, a couple years ago. A friend of mine's son plays rugby and I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to um, shoot a concept that I had in my mind. I thought this kind of pose that I have here um, where he's, he's got his, you know, that look on his face and he's looking real mean and, and crazy. <laughs> I thought this would be a, a, a cool uh, picture to uh, use with a background that I wanted to shoot. And I'll show you the background here by itself. Um, this is a background of just a junior high um, football field, and I waited until actually there was a hailstorm coming up, and I thought, you know what, this would be the perfect time to do it. So I grabbed my camera, ran out there, shot some HDR, and um, it, it really turned out pretty cool. Now, I enhanced that image. I'll turn on this next layer here. It's got some curves, kind of make it a little more dramatic looking. Um, and then I actually added in uh, what we're going to do today, which is extract this photograph from another photograph and put it in this one. And then you can see I put a little atmosphere, kind of a little bit of fun in there um, just to kind of enhance things and then a little bit of a vignette. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on what we're doing today, which is the extraction. Um, Here's a photograph. I'm not sure it's the exact same photograph that I used for the other one, but it'll actually work out good. And this extraction is really going to be, as far as um, extractions go, not too terribly hard, um, but it, uh, it will show you uh, my uh, process that I go through to do an extraction. Now the only thing that would make this harder is if I was doing you know a bunch of wispy hair or something like that in here. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, how I start an extraction is basically on my background layer I just use the quick selection tool first and get just a, a down and dirty kind of selection at first. So I'm just going to click on the inside here. And I'm not even zooming in just yet um, because I don't really care too much about what I'm getting just yet. All right. Click at a few areas here. All right. And like I've, I've uh, said before, I, I kind of work from the big picture down to the details. And I see now that I've got some areas like this, um, some areas in here that I've missed. So now that I've got the big picture taken care of, I'll go ahead and zoom in and uh, see what I can do with some of these other areas. So now with this area that I want to subtract, I need to hold Alt and click in that area. Now see I got a little bit of his jersey in there so I'll click on that and that looks pretty good. I'll search along here. Here's his ear that needs to be a little bit trimmed in there. Got that. And on this side we've got part of his mouthpiece which they put behind their ears I found out <laughs> when they're not actually playing. Uh, kind of strange, but fun. And I'm going to make sure that I have that in there. Now, on this ball, you're going to see some areas that we need to kind of make sure that we include. Because there's different colors in there. One down here that we need to get in. All right. One more place there. And that stripe needs to go in. Okay, pretty good. So now that I've got that, anytime you've got a selection, and this is a selection, um, made, then you can, as long as you have the uh, selection tool 
selected, then you can go to the top here. There's a dialog for Refine Edge. And I'll go into Refine Edge. This dialog box will come up. And if I've got light and light subject like this, we've got a white shirt on, um, I lit it real dramatic with white edges, then I want to make sure that I have this on a dark background so I can see exactly what I'm getting. So in this view mode, I can go here and I can say on black. All right, so now I'm looking at what the selection looks like on black. And I can go here and choose this uh, refine radius tool. And I can go in here and say on his hair, just paint along the edge and get that detail that I'm looking for. Every little hair that's sticking up, I should be able to get pretty easy. Looks good. All right. Now, just as a, a habit, I'll go in and I'll feather this maybe a pixel or two just so that it's a little softer transition between my selection and my background. And really, I don't mess with it any more than that. I just make sure that I've got a pretty decent um, selection. And most important for me, my output box here. I make sure that I output this selection to a layer mask. And once I do that, then I can go back in and I can make some changes. So now I've got this where um, I can see my extracted selection here. And as you can see in my dialog box here, I have just the background layer with the thumbnail or the uh, layer mask on there. And what I want to do again, just so that I can check out this edge along here, I will use different color um, backgrounds to check that. Now, first I'm going to check just with a dark background so I can see my light areas and make sure that I have that. And I want to put my new layer below it. So I'll hold control on my keyboard and click the new icon, which will put the selection or the new layer below. And my foreground color is black, so I will choose Alt Backspace to fill, and then I'll get close to my edges here. That's what I want to do. And you can see that there's a little area right here that I can actually paint out. So I go back to my layer mask and with my brush, a soft brush, get my brush selected there. Um, I'm going to go in here, make sure I've got a soft brush, and I do. Nice. And I'm going to just paint out, I'm on this mask, I'm going to paint out this area here that I saw that was still left in there. And basically, I just go along the edge here and look at that entire edge and make sure that everything that I want. Now here I can see there's a little bit of, oh, maybe some of the hair on the back of his hand, which, you know what, it's not that important to show that in this case. So I'm just going to go in here and make a little smaller brush. And by the way, I'm doing this all with a mouse. I, I use a Cintiq, which uh, makes things a lot easier, but just for the sake of tutorials, I want to make sure that I'm using what probably most people are going to use. So um, a lot of these tutorials, I want to go ahead and use a mouse because I think that just kind of makes it more more believable. Some people might think, well, you're using a Cintiq or using a tablet. That might make it a lot easier. Well, I just want to show you it can be done with a mouse too. All right, so this area right here I've got, which is actually I need to add to that image. So I'm going to push X on my keyboard so that I'm painting with white. And I'll add that part in. So that's the beauty of using a layer mask is these little areas that I miss. I can just go back in by painting on that mask and make sure that I have the areas that I want. There's a little area there, 
Okay. I always say with this, in all my classes, I always say, unfortunately, there's no good way, or no fast way, I'll say it that way, of, of doing a mass. You just have to do it and uh, take your time and make sure that you've got it right. There's no shortcuts is what I'm saying. Let me get a little closer on this edge. Move down. Take a look at this. I'm not sure exactly what this is. So I better check it out. No, it's fine. Just part of his fabric. <laughs> All right. So that looks like, with the exception of this, I'm going to go ahead and paint with black. Go ahead and clean that up. All right. Looks like we have a pretty decent selection. So really, it's it's a matter of going back and forth I'm, and finding the dark edges and the light edges. Now, I'm just going to go here and I'm going to change this background color now to a light color so that I can check my dark edges. Now, a lot of times there's nothing here that I have to be concerned with. But in this case, just to show you that I do this from time to time, um, uh, how to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that. I'm going to control backspace because that's my, my background color. I want to make it white. And basically I do the same thing. I just get in close. And see these edges, edges right here? I can go in there and clean those up. And this is where it does, whoops, I got to make sure I'm on the layer mask. This is where it does pay to have a tablet or a Cintiq to be able to get this little edge. Now, I'm not going to be real crazy about it. I just want to point it out that this is one of those dark edges that I'm talking about that you might want to pay attention to. Okay, I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me clean this up completely. So, let's just say I got that taken care of. The next step that I want to step that I want to do is I want to be able to get my um, image that I've extracted to my background. And I'm going to use a different background this time because it's got a little bit of color shift to it that I want to be able to address and show you how I do that too. So I'm going to go ahead and select the layer that has the extracted uh, layer and the layer mask. I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to say duplicate layer. And I already have the background layer or the, the uh, what's going to be my background layer opened in this uh, document. So it will show up down here in the destination. I can call this whatever I want. I'm going to go ahead and leave that as layer zero copy. And what's important is I want to go here to this parking garage with green uh, PSD, which is another document that I have open. And I'll say OK. And that's going to bring my background into that document. Now that looks kind of strange, as you can see. But I want to go ahead and Control T to size that how I want. And I'm going to have it cover a good portion of this background and maybe a little bit larger is where I want to go with that. Maybe not so big because I want to make sure I see his hand right here. And I'll reduce that a little bit like that and kind of bring that down. Looks good. All right. Go ahead and say OK, and zoom out a little bit. So now, as you can see, I've got my um, extracted uh, layer here on top of a layer that I shot in a parking garage. You can see in a parking garage, there was lots of tungsten light. So it's a nice warm or orange look to it. So I want to kind of make a little of that spill onto this uh, composited layer to just give it a little more believability. Um, you know, I don't know why the rugby player is in a parking garage, but let's just say that that's where he is and he's having fun. So <laughs> let's suspend belief a little bit. 
All right, so how I do that, it's pretty kind of down and dirty. I just go ahead and make another blank layer above the layer that I have here. And I go with my um, eyedropper tool and I find some of that warm color, which is going to be in here. And I just fill that layer with that color. And then I go in and probably like a soft light is what I'm going to need. And you can see that I now I've got that kind of warm tone over the whole picture. But now remember I have a layer mask. And one of the things that you can do with a layer mask is you can basically copy that layer mask to another layer. So this layer mask, if I hold Alt and then click and drag it up to this top one, then that's going to copy that layer mask onto that layer. And now that orange tint is just on my extracted layer. And since it's on its own layer, I can go ahead and just see there is 0% where it's got a real cool look. And I can just bump it up till it has a little better match of its background, makes it a little more believable. And as you can see, everything that I do is a little heavy handed uh, when it comes to saturation and color. So just kind of whatever your liking is with it. And that gives me a little better color tone on there. All right. So basically that is what the technique is for me for extracting um, photographs and putting them in other backgrounds or figures and put them in other photographs. I have a nice um, transition here as you can see all the way around and it looks like it's pretty believable. The only thing that I might do is something that I just kind of call putting a little atmosphere in and just kind of throw in a little bit of haze in the background here. It kind of pulls those together. And how I do that is I want to click on the layer where my extraction is. And again, I'm going to hold control and then I'm going to make a new layer and that puts it below that layer. And on this layer, I'm going to go ahead and choose white in my brush. Make sure that my brush is nice and soft and it is. And actually, I'm going to bring the flow since I'm just using a mouse. I don't have pressure sensitivity. I'm going to bring the flow down pretty far and maybe the opacity down pretty good. And then basically, I'm just going to on that layer with white, I'm just going to throw in a little bit of just kind of around some of the edges, especially on this dark areas here. Now I'm painting actually behind my figure there. And that just kind of gives it a little, oh, it's just, I think it cuts the contrast down for me a little bit and makes it look like that belongs in that photograph a little bit better. Okay, I could go all day. Anyway, so that is our tutorial for today. And um, if you have any questions on what I did, just go ahead and ask me a question down in the uh, comments. And remember to subscribe. And again, I'm going to do a video every week. So make sure that you subscribe and you get a notice that says there's another cool video out there from Express Workshops. Okay. That's it, and we will see you next week. Thanks.